In a lifetime, 60 years is significant. Not too many businesses, working relationships, and even marriages are able to survive that test. So many events can interrupt or change the flow. It is very special to be able to celebrate a 60th anniversary. That is exactly what we are doing this summer here at Camp Robin Hood. In 1946, a group of four who were destined to become social workers and teachers had a vision of what a summer for children who remained in the city might look like. The YMCA and some communities did provide summer daycare for working parents, and some schools were opened for recreational activities. Almost all of these programs were referred to as day camps. These four, well ahead of their time, saw the needs for an organized day full of experiences that would help children learn to work and play together and ultimately have fun. Most importantly, they recognized the value of inclusion and were able to provide a program that met the needs of all children. Except for swimming, all the activities were geared to the out of doors. This was truly the first real day camp, not only in Toronto, but in Canada, and it was the first that was established by a private group. The camp was originally run in Sherwood Park in the ravines of North Toronto. That is how the name Robin Hood came to be. The camp, even in those early years, provided transportation to and from the site. Groups explored the forested areas, did stream studies for nature, played games, and had swimming daily. There were two aspects of the summers in Sherwood that stand out in the minds of most campers of that era. Swimming in the small confines of the indoor pool in either North Toronto Collegiate or Northern Secondary School and walking the many hills to get to and from activities. The staff remember writing daily reports on their campers long into the evening. By the mid-50s, the program was so successful that three satellite facilities were set up, one in High Park, one in Scarborough, and one at Sportsland Park in the Highway 7 and 400 area. By 1959, the camp had moved all of its activities to Sportsland Park or Maryland Gardens as it was first known. Almost 250 campers daily came to this weekend park retreat from all over Toronto, Rosedale, North York, Forest Hill and Bathurst Manor. Robin Hood set up at the west end of the site on a large open field and the adjacent apple orchard. Each Monday the staff put up the tents in the shade and each Friday to avoid the weekend crowd they took them down and stored them in one of three portable buildings we brought in as activity cabins. Nature, French, arts and crafts, sports, and quiet games were the mainstay of our day. Of course, the most important feature at Sportsland Park was this lake-like concrete swimming pool, which was gently sloped like a lake and was a quarter mile long and a hundred yards wide. It was the largest man-made concrete swimming pool in the world. In the center of this lake, walls were built to outline an Olympic 50-meter 10-lane pool where world-class swimmers trained. All campers received Red Cross swimming instruction twice daily. It was due to this facility that Pearl and I found employment at Robin Hood. I trained in that pool in the early morning and late afternoon. A friend of mine saw an ad for a swimming director and a nurse, and we both jumped at the opportunity. It is wonderful to be at the right place at the right time. Of course, overnights were popular events for our campers at Sportsline Park as they are now. Not only did the campers enjoy sleeping over, food cooked over an open fire, and great evening activities, but they also got to walk to the 400 drive-in to see part of a featured movie. We did have to be very careful walking to the drive-in. The area between our site and the drive-in proved to be a haven for a family of skunks, and on more than one occasion we had to run and search for tomato juice to help get rid of the odor that clung to one or more of our campers. Rainy days proved to be a real challenge for us. By 9.30 a.m., when the buses arrived at Sportsland Park, we had to decide if we were staying at the site which had little or no shelter, or if we were moving all of our campers to two churches in Thornhill that were rented for inclement weather. If we didn't decide at that time, we were out of luck because the buses wouldn't return until 3.30 p.m. You can guess that we made the wrong decision at least 50% of the time, but our campers were tough and we all enjoyed sharing these minor inconveniences. During the summer of 1961, the Ontario government announced that it wanted to build Highway 407. It only took 40 years to assemble the land and build the highway. Torstar made a generous offer to the owners of Sportsland Park, and the park gave Robin Hood notice that we would have to move for the summer of 1963. By October 1962, we had 300 registered campers, but nowhere to go. We were fortunate that our loyal secretary, Virginia Paul, knew all of our families well. In conversation with a Mr. Harry Cates, she let him know we were looking for a place to locate Robin Hood. 
Perry offered us the land we are on now here in Markham. When we came to the site, we were very reluctant to accept this offer. We didn't believe we could build a pool, fix up the barn as a rainy day site, and grass the entire area for play for the start of camp. Harry assured us that his partners were builders and would have everything ready by the end of June. As it turned out, Harry was true to his word. Even when the builder of the pool went bankrupt, Harry's partners were able to step in and do all of the concrete and plumbing required. However, it wasn't until the first day of camp that the fences went up around the pool and the health department gave us permission to open. The grass, unfortunately, didn't take. Thus, we invited our families to the site and gave them the option of a refund if they wished to withdraw. Very few families did, and all the campers that stuck it out enjoyed a great staff and a wonderful summer. As well, the families received a discount the next season for their loyalty. Shortly thereafter, Harry allowed us to purchase the property he and his partners had worked so hard to prepare. Robin Hood grew slowly and steadily over the next few years. Although the site had much to offer, it is the high quality of staff that made each summer worthwhile. We credit them for a great deal of our success. Many staff have heard me comment at the conclusion of the summer that this is the best staff ever. Throughout all of our years, the quality of the staff has increased because the staff have enjoyed the camp experience and have grown in knowledge, skill and desire. By 1976, I realized that if we were to maintain the high level of service that we were accustomed to, Pearl and I would need to devote full time to camp. It was and is a labor of love for us. Although we had to learn to run a business, we thoroughly enjoyed every aspect of camp from dealing with staff, campers and their parents. Being on our own property, we've been able to build our facilities slowly to meet the needs of the goals we have established. We do have a distinct and well thought out philosophy that has been well accepted in the community. We have always believed that camp is a wonderful place for staff and campers to develop skills, self-esteem and appreciation for the out of doors and be in an environment that takes full advantage of experiential learning. Unlike school, passing and failing have no place in our setting. We all learn at our own pace and of course learning is accelerated when you're having fun in a trusting environment. Pearl and I have been blessed with the fact that Sarah and Michelle, our children, love camp as we do. Michelle, a nurse, finds her way to us each summer from Florida with her family to assist in our health center, Robin Aid. Sari, as an occupational therapist, was able to use her professional experiences to further the growth of Robin Hood. As a person who had experienced almost every position at camp, she has made Robin Hood an inclusive environment. Fortunately, Sari had met Howie during her high school years, and for over 16 years now, here at Robin Hood, he too has immersed himself in our program. As a physical education teacher, Howie followed in my footsteps, eventually gave up teaching to become a full-time director at camp. Sari and Howie have a wonderful partnership. They have qualities that complement each other. Sari looks after campers and the inclusive program, while Howie is our programmer who works closely with our staff and has now taken over the hiring process. Although Pearl and I have not been at camp for all 60 years, we are celebrating 45 years. We have no regrets. We've enjoyed every minute of being part of this community. The challenges, the disappointments, the growth, the development of staff and campers alike. We know we have influenced tens of thousands of lives. We believe that this has been a worthwhile lifelong experience for us. We hope others will agree. <laughs>